Hey, howdy, hey y'all, welcome back to the channel. Do you guys remember the glory days of gaming shows like E3? You used to be hard pressed to find games that sucked during huge events like that. Now it just seems like all we see are horrible game after horrible game when it comes to these showcase events. As you guys know, this past weekend was absolutely filled to the brim with gaming showcases and events, with pretty much every single one of them being forgettable and painful to watch. There were some diamonds in the rough and I wanna show some love to those in this vid, but for the most part, I could have slept perfectly fine missing these events. Stick around to hear my thoughts on this one folks it's gonna get a little messy but before we get into it and if it ain't too much to ask if you watch till the end and you like what you've seen then consider hitting that sub button for more content like this okay Let's get into it. When it comes to games that are in my rotation, they are very few and far between. The three games I've been keeping on rotation have been Dead Island 2, Battlefield 2042, and Diablo 4. Mainly because you can't play games without getting your fucking IP addresses stolen or having horribly subpar experiences. From the Summer Games Fest, the games I am excited for the most to see release are Party Animals, which is a little gang beast lookalike party game. Looks super fun to play. John Carpenter's Toxic Commando. A lot of people weren't feeling this one at at all. Surprisingly enough, I am actually really excited for it because it has Saber Interactive and Focus Entertainment collaborating on this project. Alan Wake 2 looks absolutely beautiful with the visuals and gritty tone. And my most anticipated game so far that I cannot wait to see release is Space Marine 2 from the Warhammer 40k series. And the reason why I'm so excited and amped for this game is because it reminds me so damn much of what I think is one of the best third person shooters of all time, Gears of War. Aside from the games I just listed off, I would have preferred if Jeff Keighley changed the goddamn name of the show halfway through from Summer Games Fest to Weeaboo Games Fest. I'm willing to bet every dollar I've ever made that 90% of that damn venue was paid anime fans. Meaning they shuffled through the r slash nice guy subreddit, found a bunch of weebs and said, hey, you guys ready to be blown away by essentially the same game 15 times in a row, but with a different title? Oh, I forgot. We're also getting a, uh, a new Spider-Man game too, which, uh, you know, okay, cool. It's not like we haven't been playing basically the same Spider-Man game since the early 2000s. Oh, and I almost forgot again. Jeff showed off a trailer for the new Twisted Metal TV show, and this shit almost went from YouTube to RedTube really quick. Truly one of the worst teaser trailers for something as badass as Twisted Metal. But, uh... Yeah, let me get back on topic here. Listen, if you're an anime fan, it's completely fine. As much as I absolutely despise anime, I have more than enough friends who watch it, so it's Gucci by me. I start taking issue, however, when it comes down to how many goddamn anime games are slated to get released either later this year or next year in 2024. I remember seeing seven of these godforsaken games without having to skim through the footage. That's all from my memory. You could have taken the titles off of the games and swapped them around with one another, asked me if the names match the game, and I would have been like, yep, checks out on my end. The ultimate sin that was committed is the amount of stupid shit being showcased in comparison to FPS titles. I felt like I didn't even hardly see any FPS games when Summer Games Fest happened, and before I knew it, the goddamn show was over with. It was done. And don't even get me started on Future Games Fest. Schematically, there were some pretty interesting looking titles. Life by You looked really cool and unique, and the precinct looked absolutely incredible, kind of like a top-down LA Noir style. So I f with those games heavy. Everything else, absolute garbage. A lot of people are gonna hit my line and say, well, Redbeard, gaming is subjective and many people must really like those games for them to be popular. And yeah, you're right. This isn't an argument about whether or not something is popular. This is an argument as to whether or not gaming as we know it is dying out and is kind of clutching at whatever, trying to conjure something that'll be long lasting and sustainable. Last year was the year of space shooters. There were about 56 space shooters slated to release and guess what happened? The market flooded and those games crashed and burned. And Retaining your titles to small niches are perfectly fine. I have plenty of titles in my Steam library catered to niche audiences. But when you step your ass up on these platforms like Summer Games Fest and start pushing niche game after niche game with little to no variation between any of them, what's the attraction factor? What are you showing me or anyone else that would indicate that your anime cartoon shooter is different from the next anime cartoon shooter? The titles that went against the grain in this were so very few and far between they stuck out amongst a crowd of lackluster titles titles, and it's usually not that way at all, it's sometimes the other way around. And I don't want to sit here and say that the pandemic skewed our reality of gaming or our expectations of gaming, but it definitely did something. The past three years for gaming have been absolutely intolerable, but it's went back farther than that I'm afraid. But we really don't know when the downfall of gaming started, most people would love to attribute it to battle passes and loot boxes. I say it all started when we allowed these companies to release the same damn game every year but with a different name and a different look. Honestly, 
honestly, in my opinion, for the past 10 or 15 years in the gaming industry, we've been putting different makeup on the same damn pig and saying that it's something different every single time when it's really not. It may look different, but it's not different at all. And while we're on this topic, I wanna go ahead and just state my claim for something that I see a lot of people talking about nowadays and it just doesn't make any damn sense to me. A lot of people fight on the hill of, we want all of the content to be released day one for the game. Why? Well, they claim if it's a $70 title, everything should just come with the game off the bat, right? In most cases, I would agree with you if it's a single player experience. But if you're talking about multiplayer PVP or co-op or PVE experiences, I do not want to hear that shit come out of your mouth. And there's a lot of reasons as to why. How many of y'all have bought a multiplayer title and about 30 or 40 hours in, you're like, why the hell am I still playing this? There's no content. Where's the content at? Well, the gaming industry, I don't want to hear it. I don't want to fucking hear it. We know the gaming industry is hurt right now. That's why I'm making this damn video. But if you honestly think that the answer to everyone's problem is putting content in the game, 100% of the content, mind you, in the game day one, it's just not gonna happen. All you're doing is blasting another hole in the side of the boat after patching the other side up. But uh, yeah, back on topic. Where I'm at with gaming right now is just kind of weird because Diablo 4 is slated to be my game of the year overall, and I'm gonna be honest, I thought Diablo was lame as hell at first. I've never played a Diablo game in my life, but I thought the idea of playing Diablo was just kind of lame. Like, why would you play Diablo when World of Warcraft was already a thing? Dead Island 2 is an incredible game that I've nearly hit 100% completion on. 2042 is getting updated and it's feeling like the battlefields I love again. I'm seeing games like Battlebit getting hated on for doing something that DICE failed to do. While people are praising Halo for finally getting character progression, even though that's some of the most basic shit to add into a video game ever, you also have Activision releasing year two content as an entirely new game and pretty much everybody except the COD creators are saying something about it. AAA gaming isn't even what it used to be. It's a shell of its former self in my eyes. Yeah, higher quality titles are being pushed out, but they are so incomplete and broken. I almost feel like I have to beg with these companies to keep these titles in the oven longer. Everyone can mutually agree that when a new $70 premium title comes out, it's usually very incomplete feeling and pretty buggy. Everyone knows that this is with roughly 85 to 90% of games that come out, but nobody does anything to fight against it. The phrase talk with your wallet doesn't even hold meaning anymore when it comes to quote, showing companies we don't fuck with their decisions because there's always some numb nut who will always buy into this shit just to spite those who won't. I feel like we're on the verge of another video game market crash and to be honest, We've been pretty long overdue for one. But just because it sounds like I'm shitting all over the AAA gaming space, which, I mean, admittingly I am, we still have to remember that the indie gaming space still has its fair share of rats within this shit infested sewer. But again, I guess voting with your wallet is the answer that everyone wants to say. And even though it's not completely useless, it just doesn't work against companies who make billions every year. If you guys enjoyed the video and you like what you've seen, then consider hitting that like button, that sub button, and bankrupt that notification bell for more content like this. And as always, my name is Redbeard Mortis. Take care of yourselves and each other, and I'll see you guys in the next one. But until then, I am gonna go find a game I like to play. I'll see you in the next one.